So uh, here is my E300 uh, electric scooter from Razer that I've modified. A um, couple of things I've done to it. I've got a thumb throttle, which gives you actuated throttle rather than just on and off. And it also shows you voltage, which is quite useful. So you can see how your batteries are going down and what you're drawing. Um, I've got the original motor. I haven't changed anything with the drivetrain. Um, as you can see, I've just got some plastic guards that stop the water getting up into the motor uh, if you happen to get caught in the rain. Um, I've got a 36 volt, 800 watt uh, ESC for this one uh, from eBay. Um, it was about eight pounds. I'll put links in the description to all these bits and bobs. Uh, and with that, I didn't have to change over too many of the connectors. The charging polarity was around the wrong way. So I just had to pull the pins out on this plug and put them around the opposite way and on the motor as well because it was going in the wrong direction. So all you need to do is turn your positive and your negative around the other way and the motor will spin in the next direction. Uh, there's a couple of wires that I'm not using at the moment. One is the brake light and the brake cut off. So when you pull the brake, it cuts the power to the motor. Um, I am not using those at the moment, but I may wire them in the future. On the throttle, you've got three wires for your controller throttle and then there's this yellow one. And the yellow one I've just connected to the spare live um, that I had, and that then gives me my voltage reading on top of the handlebars. Uh, power connection, I'm using XT60s, which are a bit of a pain to solder, but once you get the hang of it, um, they're really, really good, and they, they, they can deal with the higher amps that this uh, can sometimes pull with the battery packs I'm using. Um, I'm using a 42 volt uh, charger which again was eBay, it was about seven pounds. Um, it has a little LED indicator that goes red, orange, green when it's charged. And when it gets to 42 volts, um, it all cuts off. Uh, the batteries I'm using are 4,000 milliamp hour or 4.4 amp hour lithium cells, 36 volts. And I have made up a parallel cable because there's two of them. Um, with XTC connectors, XT, XT60 connectors. Um, these are connected so it goes positive and positive down to the positive on the main plug and negative to negative to the same. This way I'm still getting 36 volts, but I've got a larger capacity battery and it can pull more amps which means it, uh, if it needs to accelerate and it needs more power, this can then give it from both batteries. Whereas if I was to do them in serial, I'd be increasing the voltage to 72 volts and none of my electrics would work because it's set up for 36. Hi cat. Um, right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pack this all back in so you can see how it lays. Uh, at the moment, I'm not using the circuit breaker that the E300 has. I've disconnected from that. Um, I do still have the standard power button and a standard charging port. I did have to put a new inline three pin connector onto the 42 volt charger. Uh, pretty simple to do, chopped off the old one, stripped the wires and then bought these plugs from CPC online. Uh, again, links will be in the description. Just one positive, one negative. Uh, positives on the left of this plug if you've got the hole, the little notch hole at the bottom and uh, so yeah you've just got to make sure you get that around the right way because if you don't you will blow your charger pack up uh, very quickly because the batteries will um, invert it and that'll be it gone um, so make sure you double check when you wire this the diagram on the back uh, of your original plug and get the wires around the right way positive to negative so yeah I'm going to put it back together now and I'll take another little video so you can see what it looks like packed Okay, so here's the batteries and the controllers all in situ. As you can see, it's quite tight. These can't really go in any other way because of their height and width. These are 10S batteries uh, at 36 volts. And as you can see, I've got the cables that come out of the batteries not near each other, just in case they were to burn out, you don't want them shorting. So keep them separate. They go into the parallel cable, which then goes into the mains to the control unit all through the XT60 connectors. And at the moment, speed wise, 
Uh, it's doing about 22 to 23 miles an hour. I haven't done a full um, check yet, but I will do uh, once it's dry and I'll put the results up. It was doing about 12 miles an hour before on the lead acid batteries, um, which did have good distance because they were 8 amp hour, but they just didn't have the get up and go that these do. Um, and it makes it a far more enjoyable ride. I am going to be putting an outrunner motor onto this. So that will be like a, a large drone motor. Got some inspiration from other YouTubers like uh, Dickie Withers and his amazing 72 volt uh, outrunner powered E300. Just want to say thank you to all the people that have answered my questions and uh, helped me along. And if you do have questions, feel free to get in touch with me. I will put up some other useful little videos about like soldering your connectors so that life is just easier. So the improvement in speed is uh, quite, quite good really. Going from 12 miles an hour with not much punch to it. It takes a while to get there on the original lead acid batteries, 8 amp hour, to these that can do 22 miles an hour get you there quite quickly in future it will be going to an outrunner motor uh, inspired by the dicky withers build thank you for all your help and uh, answering all the questions if you have any questions i'm more than happy to answer them i will put up a video about the xt xt60 connectors um just on how to solder them in the easiest way i found um, because of their size and the amount of heat they can take it makes them quite difficult to solder but as you can see i've managed to do quite a, a neat job there are some uh, people on YouTube that are doing mods for these that I, I wouldn't recommend. There's no point hacking things apart too much when there's such cheap uh, parts out there uh, to make these things work so well. Anyway, hope you enjoy this. I'm going to stick the rain cover back on and uh, take some pictures of it all working. Uh, one little addition that I have added. Um, you'll notice that there's some plastic here. And underneath here, um, this is just recycled packing plastic, but it stops the splashes that come from the wheel if you get caught in the rain, because I live in England. Um, and also, you'll notice that there's a plastic cover over here. Again, just recycled plastic tucked down through the hole, and then the bar goes over the top of it, some screw holes so that you can mount your casing over the top. But anything that sprays up um, could get into where your battery containment is. And then you've got possible possibility of shorts and we don't want that happening um so it's just an added little layer it's not even very much but once the casing's over the top of it you know it just gives it added protection um, and there's screw holes so it will tighten down in those areas um the front cabling where it goes in just down here just put some hot glue around it just to make sure it's completely sealed uh, then you haven't got any water coming up because the back will chuck a lot uh, the front will chuck it all over your legs okay but the back will chuck it over the top on the back of your legs and then up into the engine compartment so i'm going to try and keep that as dry as possible just in case i think the next thing to build is just a little back mud guard to stop it flicking up onto your legs while you're riding because although it has a tail it's not long enough to stop the flick okay so one last little thing see i've put full grip tape on it and at the back to solve the issue of uh, water getting sprayed up all over the place, I've just got this piece of uh, rubber cut into a square, popped it underneath the rear fender, and pushed a screwdriver through it. It's about, I don't know, four mil thick. I pushed a screwdriver through it and then bolted it with some nylon nuts that are on there so it doesn't come off. And uh, that should solve the problem. Uh, just in case you do get caught short in the rain, it's not ideal to be riding an electric scooter. Um, but if you try and prep it as much as you can, you shouldn't have any issues.